well in this video we will look at questions like these two now these two are based on hardy weinberg equilibrium so before looking at the questions let us understand what is the hardy weinberg equilibrium hardy weinberg equilibrium It is actually an equation given by these guys Hardy and Weinberg. The equation is similar to the binomial expansion of a plus b whole square. In this thing, e plus q whole square is equal to p square plus 2pq plus q square. And all this is equal to one. Now this equation is very important in biology. Why so? What does an equation got to do with biology? See, the thing is, every term in this equation is important. Why? What is p? What is q? What do these terms represent? It is just an expansion of a formula, ain't it? No. The p in this equation represents the dominant allele. The q represents the recessive allele. So whenever we see the term P and Q, we are also saying that dominant allele plus recessive allele should always be equal to 1 in a gene pool. This is the first point that we get from Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The second thing is, what is P square? What is Q square? What is 2PQ? Can we just easily say that uh, P square is the dominant allele square? Well, no, things are not that easy. Let me put it this way that P square is the percentage of population. that is homozygotic dominant let me write it like this <coughs> dominant homozygotes like if they have an allele called A and it is dominant over small a then the p square population has a a genotype getting it this is p square q square is the percentage of population that is recessive homozygote In Q square, the thing is like that, their genotype is small a, small a. This is the genotype for Q square. Okay. Now, the term 2PQ, this represents the percentage of population. Who are heterozygotes
and their genotype is somewhat like capital A small a. This is the case for the population. The term 2PQ represents these heterozygotes. So what does it got to do now? So we are saying that first the dominant allele and the recessive allele should add up to be equal to 1 and then these are not regarding populations this is just the distribution of this allele and now when we are classifying the population then we are saying that p square represents the dominant homozygotes q square represents recessive homozygotes and 2pq represents the heterozygotes so now let us look at the questions The first part says in corn, purple colors are dominant to yellow. So like let's make it an assumption. Let's make an assumption that for example P is the dominant allele representing purple and small p is the recessive allele. So this is for this is the purple allele and this is for the yellow allele. Now a random sample of 100 kernels is taken, okay, and they are saying that 9 kernels are found to be yellow. So this, uh, let me take this thing right here and discuss it down here. Let's say this is for problem number 1. So let P capital P represent dominant allele for purple kernels and small p small p is not that prominent i feel so this is the small p represent the recessive allele for yellow kernels And they have also told, let us recheck, yes, they have taken 100 samples, first of all, and from these 100 samples, so 9 of them are found yellow, so 9 out of 100 are yellow. and 91 samples out of 100 are purple so you might be thinking why are we are given the percentage of population with recessive allele and given this thing for dominant allele where are the homo heterozygotes actually the thing is if you see closely if this was our allele for dominant uh, dominance yes so if someone if some kernel has a genotype of p capital p capital p it will be purple right and according to the law of dominance if a heterozygote is there with a genotype capital p small p this also will have purple color so qualitatively you cannot say what part of the population uh, this 91 out of 100 is heterozygote and what is homozygote so if we have small to small p however it will be yellow it is marked well so what are we asked now let us see what are we asked 
what is the frequency of yellow lead frequency of yellow lead okay one thing i also forgot to mention that these were the frequencies of the lead i yes i talked about p and q and uh, told that they were representing dominant and recessive alleles respectively but they were representing uh, the frequencies of the dominant and recessive alleles so this is the case so 9 out of 100 are yellow so actually term q square that is the percentage of uh, population with recessive alleles right so this q square is given to us as 9 over 100 that is 0 0.09 we are asked to find out the frequency of the recessive allele this is quite simple now so this means q is the square root of 9 over 100 that means 3 over 10 or 0 0.3 so that's it that's your answer right in front of you so the answer for the first question is that the frequency for the recessive yellow lead is 0 0.3 let's move on to the second question a population of sheep is in hardy wean break equilibrium again these things are applicable to this the allele for white wool is w so they have given us the alleles to work with W has an allele frequency frequency of allele uh, as 0.19 so this is the capital W so shall we assume that this is the dominant allele yes so allele frequency for the dominant allele is 0.19 and the allele for the black wool that is the recessive allele we don't have to get into white wool and black wool things we just have to see what allele is that Dominant allele has an allelic frequency of 0.19 and small w has an allelic frequency of 0.81. So let's write it down. This is problem number 2. So they are saying W represents what? White wool. And small W represents black wool. So they have said that the capital W has an analytic frequency of 0 0.19 0 0.19 is the analytic frequency so let us say this is the dominant analytic frequency of 0.19 for white wool quite clear and 0 0.81 for the recessive allele So in this population, they have given us the values of P and Q. They have asked us what is the percentage of heterozygous individuals. They have asked the percentage of heterozygous individuals. What is the percentage of heterozygous individuals represented as? We have just seen that 2 PQ. This is the thing percentage of population that is heterozygotic is represented by 2pq we have 
this curves to it. So let us apply this thing. So let us just write this statement that the percentage of population with heterozygotic genotype is two times p times q first of all so now as p equals to 0.19 and q equals to 0.81 so it is safe to say that the answer does is twice of the product of 0.19 and 0.81 so quickly calculating the value gives us the result as 0 0.31 0 0.31 can also be represented as 31 upon 100 or 31 percent this is the answer so the answer to the second problem was that heterozygotic population thirty one percent of the total population so that was it for these two problems I hope I have done a good job at explaining it if you have any other query regarding biology physics chemistry or mathematics drop your question below in the comment section.